Supposed Biblical Error, Luke's Geography In Luke 9, it says, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. After this, we see Jesus is still on his way, but stops in a village to stay with Mary and Martha. Then Jesus journeys through more villages, continuing to make his way to Jerusalem. But then we read he's back up in Galilee and still on his way to Jerusalem. He then ends up in Jericho, and then finally he makes it to Jerusalem. This appears to be a geographical nightmare and that Luke did not understand the geography of the region. J.A. Robertson said, There is no portion of the writings of Luke which present a more forbidding obstacle to our acceptance of the claims of the evangelist to be an accurate and orderly historian, then the section of the third gospel, which is sometimes called the travel narrative. It is the happy hunting grounds of the detractors of the historian, and his defenders have sought to gloss over the difficulties that confront us here by suggesting that the order in which Luke declares he has arranged his material is logical rather than chronological. Some have argued Luke took things out of chronological order and created a theological order but Luke Vandeweghe suggests the solution is found in an undesigned recreation between John and Luke. John identifies the village of Mary and Martha as Bethany, which is southeast of Jerusalem. John also says Jesus was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedication, which would have occurred around December, a few months before Passover and his crucifixion. Then John says he went east across the Jordan and then came back to Bethany to raise Lazarus from the dead. John then says he went to a region near the wilderness to a village called Ephraim. Both Luke and John believe these events preceded Jesus' triumphant entry, and if we line them up on a map, we get this itinerary. Jesus journeys south, then east, then back west, before turning north. The map doesn't seem to make much sense at first, but we must remember that Jesus believed his journey to Jerusalem was in line with the prophetic traditions of Elisha and Elijah. Thomas Brody notes there is a literary connection between the beginning of Luke's travel narrative and the travel itinerary prior to Elijah's ascension. Luke states, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And in 2 Kings we read, Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. There are no other biblical texts which speak of one journeying and about to ascend. In 2 Kings, we read they went down to Bethel, then to Jericho, and then across the Jordan, where Elijah was taken up. Then Elisha goes across the Jordan, back to Jericho, back to Bethel, and then the Mount Carmel and returns to Samaria. If we place this travel itinerary next to the one Jesus walks, which we get when we combine Luke and John, we have a close match. It seems Jesus was walking the travel itinerary of Elijah and Elisha to demonstrate he was in their prophetic line before he went to Jerusalem to complete his mission. Of course, the Gospels do not mention Jericho, but that would be the natural place to pass through if one was going to cross the Jordan. We can see other allusions in the travel narrative of Luke. James and John asked to call fire down from heaven, which finds a parallel in 1 Kings 1. Another is found in how Elijah calls Elisha to be his disciple, but says he first has to kiss his parents goodbye, which Elijah permits. And similarly, a man comes to Jesus to ask to be his disciple, but says he must first say goodbye to his family. Jesus does not permit this and says, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God, which shows resemblance to Elijah, but also that Jesus had a superior ministry. We find other allusions as well. Gerald Bostock has noted that the seven miracles John has selected to write about reflect the miracles of Elisha. After the transfiguration, Jesus freed a demon-possessed boy after his disciples failed to do so. And likewise, Elisha healed a boy at Mount Carmel after his servant failed to do so as well. Jesus identified John the Baptist as the new Elijah, and since Jesus came after John, it would make sense that he would see himself as the new Elisha, as Bostock says. The explicit identification which Jesus made between John and Elijah lends weight to the possibility that he saw himself as the new Elisha, in the same way that he saw John as a new Elijah. Paul Barnett, 
Notes in the period after Jesus, there was a rise of what he has named the signs prophets. These were self-proclaimed prophets who attempted to reenact the actions of prophets from the Hebrew Bible in order to activate the hand of God in bringing about salvation. It seems there was a cultural theme in that period that a new prophet should reenact actions of former prophets as a sign from God. Barnett suggests Jesus was the first prophet to initiate this cultural idea, and we see Jesus did many things to show he was the new Moses, Joshua, or David. And so it makes sense, he would also want to indicate he was the new Elisha by reenacting some of his actions as well. Thus, it appears Jesus was merely walking the path of Elijah and Elisha before going to Jerusalem, which required the geography that Luke and John lay out. Luke Vandeway says, The fact that this Elijah-Elisha-like journey of Jesus can only be reproduced by combining Luke and John's accounts is part of that large web of interconnectivity. If we take Luke's prologue at face value, that Luke crafted an accurate rendering, then this fatal Elijah-Elisha journey is a window into the life of the historical Jesus. Given this connection, it is not that Luke gets his geography wildly wrong. It's that he was telling us Jesus walked the path of Elijah and Elisha to demonstrate he was in the same prophetic line. We see that John fills in some important details to support this. Neither is complete alone, but together, they support the existence of an undesigned recreation that aligns with Jesus' motives. Thus, this supposed error can be resolved.